Alright guys, this is Luke from Action Team Broforce Guild. Um, my new guild. A uh, bunch of cool guys in there. Good shout out to them guys. Uh, doing a lot of good shit right now. Uh, doing a, uh, some very good progression groups going on. Um, a lot better than I've seen in uh, the past two guilds I've been in. And very excited and happy about that. Um, I realize it's been a little while since I've done another healing uh, sort of Esper video, so I realized I'm going to go ahead with this video and talk about um, a healing build that uh, I've been using a lot lately, and, and I really found a lot of good use for it. Uh, I'm talk about some stat priorities first, uh, talk about some runes, rune sets, uh, build, amps, you guys know the deal. Um, so anyway, um, sit back, relax, let's uh, have some fun with this. Um, Alright, stat priorities uh, for the Healing Esper. Uh, regardless of what build you use, uh, we'll always, first and foremost, we're going to talk about primaries, is uh, Insight. It's your most important stat, because it gives you support power. Uh, the next one, next primary stat would be Finesse, because uh, it gives you crit hit rating uh, and crit hit severity rating. Um, the next stat priority would not really it's 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 one of those things i really don't like brutality because uh the milestones alternate and you don't need strike through as a healer uh and as you can see right here this is exactly what i'm talking about like it if i get 375 brutality i get strike through rating added if i get 450 brutality i get crit hit severity rating but then i have two more strike through rating milestones so this is why I will not say Brutality is the next one. I would actually say that Grit would be your next primary stat um, because a dead healer doesn't heal. Um, and right now that's that's what I'm kind of dealing with. As you can see, uh, I got 24,950 health and that's pretty damn low. Um, and so I might have to take another good look at my runes uh, and possibly see if I can bring that health up a good bit because uh, that is an issue. Um, but, uh, anyway, um, then the next one would be Brutality, in my opinion, uh, and after that, that's pretty much it for the primaries, um, the secondary stats, uh, that you want to look for, first and foremost, is support power. Anything with higher support power will always be better. It scales better than any other stat that you have, um. So obviously if you find a piece of gear with more support power than what you currently have, um, most of the time you take it, 9 times out of 10. Uh, the only way you wouldn't take it, for example, is if uh, you lose possibly a few milestones. And it would have to be a pretty important stat like finesse or something like that. Um, and so, but anyway, uh, the next secondary stat would be uh, crit hit chance okay crit hit severity would be followed next then you would oh I'm sorry I fucked up guys I apologize <laughs> let me start over uh, support power is number one okay the next one would be getting focus recovery rate then crit hit chance crit hit severity um, and lastly just base health or you know max health in this case so that pretty much covers the stats and what I was wanting to talk about there. Um, the next thing would be runes. Um, as you can see on pieces of gear, you get runes, rune slots. And for the most part, I've, I've slotted inside. Um, you know, the only exception would be uh, if you get like a fusion slot, support power, because it scales better, because it's a secondary stat. Uh, you'd want that. It's just, it's the same idea as like DPS um, with the Esper. Like if you think if you watch that video, if you didn't, um, obviously you wouldn't want to put Moxie there because it scales less than straight up assault power. Okay, um, so you know anytime you see like a fusion slot, especially you know uh, one that is first, uh, the first rune. Um, on a piece of gear, you always want to slot support power. Always. There's no reason not to. Um, 
it will make your heals stronger and like I stated earlier uh, it, it, it just scales better than anything any other stat there's no argument you can make that uh, you know would convince me otherwise okay um, all right so with with slots uh, like I said, most for the most part, I, I slotted inside, uh, unless it was a fusion slot, and then I slotted support power. Um, when I reached a certain threshold of stats where I felt like I didn't really need any more focus recovery rate, then I started slotting like uh, crit hit um, and stuff like that. Um, Earth slots are probably the worst ones for us. I think that's like universal for every class. Um, so I always slot like crit hit severity. Um, again, these are my opinions. You don't have to agree with them. That's just what I, my experience and, and what I've been doing. Uh, the other thing to mention about runes is that, and you'll know this if you've been, you know, playing with them a little bit, is that, uh, say, you know, for example, with this side blade I have, um, I have four rune slots. Okay, so um, the first rune slot on that piece of gear gives you 100% of whatever the stat is, right? Well, every slot after that gives you less of a percentage. So that's why it's important, like when you're looking for pieces of gear, and this is gonna change, I'm, su I'm sure, at some point, uh, because it's so random and so difficult uh, to gear up, I guess, precisely or uh, economically, because, uh, you know, you run in the same thing, same dungeon, same raid, uh, wanting to get these perfect rune slots on it um, because the stats on the piece of gear doesn't change really at all um, for that particular piece of gear that drops but the rune slots do okay if that makes sense um, so uh, anyway that's enough about that um, the the rune set that I would highly suggest for healers out there either starting better in dungeons or um, you know maybe even starting raiding uh, would be the focus region set uh, and, and you can see it right here it's uh, basically I have the 8 set I've almost got enough to get 12 um, it increases your max focus um, by 93 this the 8 eight amount uh, or 8 rune slots for focus reason uh, it increases your max, fo max focus by 93 and grants a 50% chance to restore 12 focus when you land a critical here uh, it can only incur every five seconds, uh, so kind of keep that in mind. But um, that's the only set I would honestly run with right now. Um, it is expensive. You have to have augmented runes, um, which on my server I think run right around, I don't know, 40 gold or so. It, it fluctuates, but that's on average. Um, so that's a lot of gold uh, to spend uh, just for... The, the reagents to make the room. Um, you also have intricate runes that you have to have. I believe it takes three. Um, and then you have to, of course, have the signs to make those runes. Um, okay, so <laughs> you're looking at like one rune probably costing you about 60 gold, I'd say. Okay, so and Rune sets, okay, if you get 12, you get this. They don't stack, okay? Um, if you have four on all your gear um, of the focus region runes, then you have this one, just the first one. Eight, okay, you get the idea. All right. Um, but I think that covers what I wanted to talk about with runes. Um, let's dump, jump into the meat and potatoes of this video, which is the build. Okay. So, um, got a lot of good feedback from some guys uh, on my last video, and I thank them for that. Uh, Tainted um, from Subterfuge, I've also been watching a lot of, uh, and he seems to run a, a variation of this build, um, basically. Uh, and, and a lot of people on the forums have talked to about uh, running something similar. Um, so anyway, uh, what I call this build is basically the fixation um, build, uh, because of course you have fixation in it, um, but we, we won't talk about that right now. The uh, 
I'm going to go through and talk about the abilities real quick. Uh, first ability is Bolster. It's basically uh, two. It's a targeted ability. Uh, you target the ally. You have two charges. So when you use one, you got one left. Uh, puts a hot on them. Uh, in this case, it restores 321 health to yourself or an ally every second for seven seconds. And it generates one side point. So I can get two side points from that using that ability alone. Uh, next ability is Bolster, or excuse me, Soothe. Um, sorry guys, I'm a little tired, I just got off work. Um, and it's kicking my ass, as usual. Um, soothe. Alright, so Soothe is basically, I'll show you what it kind of looks like. Um, so as you can see, it's, it's a line telegraph. You start it to charge it, hit it again to release it. You can change that with the options. Uh, combat options on your uh, in your interface if you hit escape uh, go up here to combat and you can use this you know you can hold you have buttons you can hold down and instead of pressing twice uh, hold down and release if that's um, a little better for you you know go ahead and use that as well um, but basically, that's what that ability does. Uh, if you get one charge, you get one side point. If you get all the way up to charge three, release it, you get a stronger heal, um, and you get two side points. All right. I tiered it up all the way to tier eight because I don't know if you guys noticed. I'll do it one more time. Uh, it adds a hot to the the end of the spell. So um, basically, you know. Charge it up, hit it, tick, 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 tick. So four ticks of a heal. May not seem like much, but you know, because we don't have mind over body in this build, um, this is the main spell you will be spamming. And you will be spamming it a lot. Um, so my suggestion would be to try to get to charge two every time. So you're at least still building side points. Um, if not to charge three. Uh, if you know the boss mechanics where there's going to be a lot of burst, um, then I would highly suggest pre-charging this and just holding it um, until that damage comes through and then let it loose. Uh, that way you're not you know, panicking like I did when I first started running this build uh, trying to heal people. Okay. Um, the next ability is uh, Reverie. It's AoE ability. It's a huge, huge, huge telegraph, as you can tell. Uh, and it restores health to yourself and nine other heart party members. So it's, it's going to be huge in raids, um, having that. Uh... Um, okay, so I, I tier 4 it, and I tiered 8 it. Aided it. Um, tier 4 uh, restores an additional... 6, 12, 18, 25, 30% health to allies when they're below 35% health. Um, and that's based off that percentage that I was talking about, uh, the 6, 12, 18, 25, and 30. And it's based off the amount of side points you have when you use that ability. Okay. Um, tier 8, um, it increases, it grants a beacon, which increases incoming healing um, by 10% for 5 seconds. Uh, so, you know, this is our way of burst burst healing. Um, when it crits, it for me, it almost crits around 11k, 11,000, um, 10,000, which is a shit ton um, of, of healing. Um, so you more than make up for the fact that you don't have mind over body for the single target by having huge AoE. Okay. One thing I didn't mention with Soothe was that, uh, you know, it restores health to yourself and your four most injured allies in that line telegraph. Okay, so that's another AoE heal. Um, the next one I have on my bar is Phantasmal Armor. Um, I still can't find a reason not to stick with this. Um, I wish I could have enough ability points to tear it up higher um, because I still think it's a very good spell. Um, I mostly use it to... It's like, oh shit, I'm behind on heals on the tank. Let me throw this on him and heal somebody else real quick. And then try to catch up, basically, in a nutshell. Okay, um, so that's that's basically covers the support spells. I have um, 
Let's talk about the utility for a sec. Um, now there's several variations. The only variation I wouldn't go away from, no matter what, is fixation. Okay. Um, and there's there's three reasons we use fixation. Okay. One, it reduces our cooldowns by sixty percent. Two, it generates three side points on the on the dot, and it's instant cast. Um, and um, the third reason is for the tier four. Uh, it generates ten focus every second for twelve seconds. So that's a free hundred twenty um, focus every forty eight seconds. I'll take that. Um, you know. It, in my experience with using this build so far, I have very rarely even dipped, I'd say even the 70% focus. Um, because my, uh, you know, one, because my focus recovery rate's pretty damn high, uh, and two is because of this ability. All right. Um, there's another use for this as well, um, and that is to reduce your cooldowns on all your other abilities. For example, Phantasmal Armor, it reduces that cooldown. It reduces both of your CCs that I have running right now, uh, which are on pretty high cooldown um, as it as it is. Um, you know, and even you know, I, even though I have fade out on here, it, it reduces that cooldown as well. Um, I'm not 100% sure that it reduces the cooldown um, of how long it takes to recharge your bolsters, um, but I would imagine it, it it probably doesn't because that would be super OP. Um, but anyway, um, that's the only, um, that's the only, uh, utility spell that I absolutely, 100% would not go away from, uh, okay. So we have Crush, uh, for our CC to help out, uh, get some moves, um, and then we also have Incapacitate. And if you are the person who are, who is responsible for taking, like, an interrupt order, you always use crush first, followed by incapacitate second. Um, it doesn't state on here um, on incapacitate that it removes an interrupt armor. However, I have seen it say, that, like with the pop-up text, that it did. Um, it's just an old habit of mine um, to always throw crush first and then incapacitate second. Um, just FYI. Now this last ability, um, you can bounce around to several different things, uh, depending on the boss fight, depending on uh, you know what is needed for your group. Um, I, I've kind of stuck with fade out because you know a CC healer isn't healing, uh, especially a CC healer who's standing in a telegraph about to die. That's bad news bears. Um, so I always usually stick with fade out. Um, I've changed it for several things. Um, Carthesis to if you know if if a boss encounter needs you to be able to cleanse somebody, this is a good ability to take um, to cleanse those debuffs that will be on your targets. Uh, so uh, the only thing, only suggestion I would state is that if uh, you do, you are running this, kind of communicate with your group that hey guys, it's a small telegraph. Um, here I'll just show it to you how small it is. It's a conal telegraph, and it is somewhat long and wide. However, you would be surprised how many times you miss people, uh, especially ranged in a group. Uh, you know, you really need to communicate with everybody and be like, hey, you guys need to be in a line or, you know, somewhere in this cone, or you're not getting cleansed, and you will die. Um, it's your job to do that as a healer. It's not their job. Uh, okay, so... Um, I would highly suggest if you do run this just to communicate, man, and uh, you know, talk to your group. Try to try to make sure that they get in there, okay? So you can have uh, maximum usefulness from from that spell. Um, uh, restraint, I've thrown that on there maybe once in all the veteran dungeons, and it was on uh, the robot, the big robot, uh, when he spawns the ads that chase people with the dots on them. That's about the only time I've ever run Restraint, to be honest. Uh, meditate, I still haven't found a use for it right now, although maybe, you know, come raid time I might. Um, I just, I, I don't run out of focus ever. I've never run out of focus. I mean, me and the tank will be just chilling. He'll be smacking the boss with his 
huge DPS, you know, and, and I'll just be sitting there at like 100% focus, like, come on, take a hit, please, so I can heal you, do something. And I'm like auto attacking the boss so we can kill him. Yeah, that's, it, it's, there's no really reason right now that I see for uh, Meditate. However, that may not be true in uh, Raiding, um, where the healing's a bit more intensive. Everything's a bit more intensive, in fact, so just keep that in mind. Uh, that is an option for you. Um, another option would be uh, Projected Spirit. I like it because, it, one, it heals you, and it has a chance to heal other allies if you know they're in that line telegraph. You're the unicorn, or whatever. That's what it looks like. Uh, here, I'll just do it. Boom! Okay. I get excited when I get to use that spell. Anyway, um, that's a pretty cool um, ability because, uh, you know, it has the the chance of, you know, the uses for it would be to obviously get out of a telegraph, get somewhere quicker, um, bridge a gap that you need to jump over. The, the uses are very, very large, okay? Uh, so it's, it's, it's a utility spell. You know, it, that I usually run a lot uh, when in, when fade out's not needed, uh, when I don't need a CC breaker. Okay. Um. So, um, one of the cool things I like to do if if I know that, um, and I kind of talked about them already. Um, if I know that my group's going to take a lot of damage, and you know, luckily my group's been running together for a long time now, um, so they know kind of to stack up in a line to get heals, or it's you know, I, or I can position myself so that they don't have to move as well. But uh, whenever I know a lot of burst damage is going to hit multiple party members, I'm already charging my bolster, ready to heal all that damage back uh, to full. So. Uh, and, and I usually charge it all the way to charge three, which gives me two side points. Um, and if I, I know they're going to take a ton more damage, if that wasn't sufficient enough to heal them up, I pop Fixation, followed by Reverie, uh, because Fixation will put me at five side points, and I get my big boom heal in there. Uh, and, you know, uh, it, that's usually enough. Um, However, you can pop your your innate now. Your innate's been changed to wear uh, spectral form or whatever. It, it doesn't root you anymore. It still gives you the absorb. still gives you the interrupt armor. Um, and it still uh, generates one side point every one second for five seconds. Okay. Uh, so, you know, you can always pop that. Get some more uh, soothe spam in. Um, again, keep in mind, soothe uh, doesn't get generate a side point unless you get to charge two. Okay, um, so keep that in mind, and you can get off another, you know, reverie, a five point reverie. Um, there's been times where I've used it under five points, uh, just to get the heals out quick because I know the guy's gonna die um, if he doesn't get heals now. Um, so, it, just a couple pointers and some experience I've had. Um, you know, I talked about how um, I've used Phantasm mainly on the tank a lot of times however it's very useful um you know if, if a dps is about to die throw it on them real quick heal your tank back up turn around and heal that dps okay um it gives you a little time to keep the dps alive keep the group going um and maximize um you guys' ownage of that boss okay or trash or what have you all right so uh, i think that basically covers the um the uh, abilities and ability tiers, some FYI stuff. Um, all right, so for the build, I took all of focus recovery. I took all of support power. I took all of focus cost reduction. Okay, so that's six percent focus cost reduction, about seven point five percent increase of my support power. Um, and about 0.3 focus recovery rate. Um, I could see in the future where I could probably take these off because I honestly have so much focus recovery. It's, it's, it's insane. And maybe get us another uh, tier 2 somewhere here. Um, but I'll have to take a good look at that before I make another decision. Um, 
Again, I don't think Focus Mastery is very good anymore. It used to be, um, so I don't take it. A couple of these would be decent. Uh, build up uh, is still, I think, currently bugged. It doesn't proc correctly. Um, it's supposed to, any builder that you use, give you one stack of build up. However, I've noticed that it doesn't do that always. Um, and even even so, when you do reach uh, healing an ally with three stacks of build up on them, you, you restore an additional 811 health and the stacks are removed. So it's the healing it does for the amount of points you have to invest is very minimal. So I don't honestly uh, like that ability as well. Amp, rather. Uh, inspiration landing a basic heal grants heal dollars uh, defense. Um, this could possibly be the next one I, I'd probably try to throw in um, because it does increase magic resistance um, by 8.5% and there are bosses that do a lot of magic damage to tanks so maybe maybe might invest that uh, those points there um, it's an okay ability though there's nothing really wrong with it I just wish it would do like all the resistances instead of just magic but I guess that would make us super OP. Um, uh, I talked about Focus for Mastery. Spectral Shield. Now this one I, I actually like a lot um, because every time you critically heal you basically give that ally um, or multiple allies with Bolster or Reverie um, an Absorption Shield. Uh, and, and you know it's not much but it's something and it mitigates a little bit of the damage that maybe your group might be taking. Okay. Uh, hard to hit, your heals have a 15% chance to grant defense, which increases their deflect chance by 8% for 10 seconds. Now where this is kind of cool is like if you get it on all the DPS as well as the tank, not only are you increasing their overall mitigation, um, <laughs> there can be times where you you might have saved a DPS's life who was, I don't know, sleeping in a telegraph um, and not moving out of it by using uh, this heal on them. Who knows? Uh, but um, anyway, uh, I don't particularly like Mirage still. Uh, even though it's our strongest heal in our arsenal, it just needs to be redone, um, really and truly. So I don't take that. Uh, Companion, it really doesn't heal a whole hell of a lot, to be honest with you. I, I used to have it, uh, and it's somewhat still buggy. It'll usually chase you around um, instead of you know hitting it on a target who needs it it's just kind of sitting there it's a carrot of death I call it but uh, anyway um, healing touch whenever you use support finisher on an ally below 30% health you heal an additional 2477 health this can only occur every 8 seconds so this one synergizes well with tier 8 reverie uh, which you know looking back at it again um, not the tier 8 tier 4 rather uh, when an ally falls below 35% health, depending on the side points, you restore an additional amount of health to those allies. So that's that's pretty nice, um, and it synergizes really well with healing touch. Okay, so I take that. A couple other things. Um, of course, I had to get down to fixation, so I took cooldown reduction, 15%. I took mental overflow. This is kind of a cool ability, like when you're full five side points or whatever um, it spawns a extra orb next to you and I can't really show you here because I'm not in combat so I can't really show you um, but what you can do is like use your finisher walk over the orb and get an extra side point for free basically you know uh, and if you're like me and, you, and you're sort of uh, conservative with your five points and side points um, you'll be seeing that orb pop up a lot um, and, and you know I kind of save that to the point where if the group needs it since my only finisher is Reverie um, I don't really use it unless they need it um, absolutely need it so but it's still nice to have okay um, gives you the possibility of having one extra side point after you've used the finisher or you know once you're at five point five side points it just builds another one basically Um, dashing, uh, defensive maneuvers. Every time you dash, your damage mitigation is increased by six percent for five seconds. Uh, it's pretty nice to have that, in my opinion. It's a plus. 
especially with the amount of health I have right now. Um, and then, of course, fixation. I had to get down there to get that. Um, and the last few si um, ability amp points that I have here is uh, maximum shield capacity, which is three, six, nine. basically gives you better mitigation okay so that's why I went there a couple different areas you could go um, you could always go down the dash region um, really wouldn't talk about CC resilience because they still have that add-on that just breaks you out of everything so you really don't need um, CC resilience that much anymore um, and in the rare cases where it doesn't break you out I mean, it really doesn't take that long to find the key and press it, you know what I mean? Um, so, I wouldn't suggest investing amp points in that. At least dash region gives you the chance to get dash tokens again uh, quicker. So, you know, I could see a, someone could argue and make a case that cooldown reduction isn't worth it. You could go down this. But with as many cooldowns that we do have, um, CCs, um, fixation, all those abilities with really long cooldowns, uh, this will help much more, in my opinion, uh, than Dash Region ever will. So, anyway, um, that's basically the build in a nutshell, guys. Um, you know, I appreciate you guys watching my videos, and um, we'll start next week, probably Monday. Um, my plan is to do a uh, Warrior uh, DPS video. So, I uh, hope you guys tune in and check that out. Uh, Again, I'm I'm trying to get back through my videos and kind of, you know, uh, get them all updated, uh, but it takes time. So thank you guys for hanging with me. Um, if you like what you saw, um, you know, maybe follow me on Twitch so you'll be alerted when uh, I do go live with my stream. Uh, if you're more interested in looking in videos in a better format, um, check me out on YouTube because I do uh, have it. I'm going to add annotations to these videos. I'm going to uh, clean them up a little bit, uh, make them a little more easier to view. Um, but yeah, uh, that's it, guys. Uh, I'm gonna sign off. Uh, I gotta get in here. We're gonna run some SSM tonight, veterans. So maybe we'll get that down. Uh, get the rest of my group attuned there. So anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. I uh, appreciate you guys uh, watching my videos. Um, we'll see you next time. This is Luke from Action Bro Force signing off. Bitches. Aired him up.